Okay, hi, it's Herodotus. It's the summary. It's book six, obviously, is where we start. And we're just going to go through some of the key points um, of book six. <clears throat> um, if you remember, there are actually 28 scrolls or logos in Herodotus. Um, and book six has 17, 18, and 19. So this is the 17th logos. And it starts off with the Persian um, reconquest of Ionia after the Ionian revolt. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Do you remember the stirring comment of Dionysus, the Persian, uh, the, the Ionian rebel naval captain, who says to his crews, are we to be free or are we to be slaves? Well, friends, that's the question for all of us, isn't it, as we move into uh, our lives. Are we to be free or are we to be slaves? He wants the Ionians to revolt against the Persians for freedom this theme that's going to run all the way through Herodotus. Um, now, when it comes to it, actually the Ionian Revolt is defeated um, and it leads on to the sack of Miletus. You remember the city that had been at the centre of the Ionian Revolt, a play written, in fact, by Phrynichus, uh, the Athenian playwright called the sack of Miletus, gets Phrynichus a massive fine of over a year's um, income because he'd made the Athenians so sad, uh, bringing the revolt back to mind. And um, the, reverse, the remainder of the opposition to the rebellion is then mopped up. And here's the quote from uh, Book 6. The boys, they would then cast straight. Any girls of exceptional beauty, they would dispatch to the king. The Persians would also, in addition to these actions, burn down entire cities. This is the ferocity of uh, the Persian treatment of the Ionians. But of course, the fact that the Athenians had helped the Ionians is what stirs the desire for revenge on the part of Darius and the Persians. And at this point, Herodotus goes into a little digression over what's going on in Greece at the time. Um, and he wants to cover the key sort of Greek cities. And so we start off with details about Spartan monarchy. Remember, there are two kings in, in Sparta, how that came about. And he also talks about how Cleomenes successfully deposed Demaratus. Now, we'll encounter Demaratus again, won't we, in uh, in Book 7, when he go, comes as Xerxes' advisor on the invasion of 480 BC. But in Book 6, what happens is that he is um, deposed by Cleomenes. Um, and if you remember, there'd been a, the, the strange story about um, Demaratus' father marrying the most beautiful um, girl in, uh, in Sparta. Um, and uh, he'd, he'd given, he'd offered his friend um, any gift that he wanted. Um, and uh, this friend, um, Agitus, chooses some kind of, um, of, of prize from the treasure. And then the deal was that Ariston could ask for anything that, uh, that he wanted from the friend. Now, the friend assumed because Ariston was married that he'd be fine. But actually, Ariston demands his friend's wife and has to give her up. Um, so he divorces his wife, marries this, this new, most beautiful woman, and um, and when they have a child, Demaratus, rather shocked, says, oh, that's come very quickly, it can't be mine, making a joke. This is the joke that Cleomenes is later going to exploit in order to question Demaratus's legitimacy. Uh, there's then an account of Cleomenes going off to attack Argos to show um, what an aggressive king he is um, before we find out details of his suicide. Uh, and then finally, there's details of the rivalry and war between Athens and Aegina, which shows us the rivalries within the Greek world uh, between the different powers. So there's a bit on the life and politics in Greece before we get to the Battle of Marathon. Um, and if you remember, um, we come back once again to why is it the, uh, the the Persians are invading, and it comes down to the start of chapter 94, the servant who says to Darius three times um, a day whenever it's a meal, remember the Athenians. Now, the invasion force is sent by Darius, it's led by Dartis and Artaphernes, or Artaphrenes, and when they arrive at Marathon, um, Hippias comes, um, on, uh, onto the land um, to guide the Persians there. And Miltiades comes out with the Athenians in order to fight. And he has to persuade the war archon Callimachus to fight the Persians. Um, you'll remember 
um, the Athenians win a victory through their innovative tactics. They're two crucial things. They weaken the centre of their army and make the wings stronger, which is kind of against the normal way you do things. And then they run the final, Herodotus says a mile, most people think it's around 200 metres between the th between 300 metres away from the enemy and 100 metres away from the enemy. That's the area where archers mainly focus their attention. The Athenians run across that section. Their centre manages to hold the middle of the Persian army until the wings, because of their greater strength, come around and um, they defeat the Persians. Uh, and as you know, 192 Athenians killed, 6,400 Persians killed. And at the end of Book 6, Herodotus praises the Alcmenid family um, and goes on to talk about the actions of Miltiades uh, after uh, the Battle of Marathon, which uh, is probably not that very important. So finally, best quotes in Book 6, things to remember and to uh, revise. Are we to be slaves or are we to be free? The great cry of the Ionian Revolt, still relevant for the rest of what the Greeks do in Book 7 and 8. Remember the Athenians? That tells us about the revenge motive of the Persians, doesn't it? Their desire to revenge themselves upon the Athenians who've helped the revolt. And then I like this one um, from Hippias. Remember, Hippias had been the tyrant of Athens until he was deposed. He comes back with Datus and Artaphernes, hoping to become tyrant once again. And he has that coughing fit uh, or sneezing fit uh, where his tooth falls out and uh, his tooth falls into the sand. He can't find it. And although initially, having had the dream the previous night that he was sleeping with his mother, rather strangely, um, which he thought was an omen to say that he was actually going to um, come back and take control of Greece, uh, or, or particularly Athens, when he can't find his tooth, he says, this land is not ours, nor will we ever conquer it. Um, and he goes on to say, the only part of it that is mine is the share of it that my tooth has claimed. Nice little reminder about omens and uh, and portents, uh, and the fact that uh, the actually there's a belief that the gods are protecting um, Greece. So there's book six. Hopefully that's helpful.